Welcome y'all West with DIY Food Plot Pro. Thanks so much for joining us. I've got a good one for you today. We are constantly dealing with problem weeds across all our food plots. Weeds and grasses and clovers or brassicas that we can't spray. Some of the weeds, we just don't have anything to spray. Others, we're scared to spray because they be in a, a dry hot period and we don't want to stress that crop by putting that herbicide on it. This video is going to help you take care of problem weeds and grasses in your food plots. So what I like about this, this is highly versatile. No matter what the weed or grass is in your specific area, this should help to control that weed or grass. I don't have a chemical that I can spray on my plots to kill those weeds and not kill the food plot that I'm raising. What options do we have at that point? The options at that point is, is either to go out there with a sprayer and spray it individually and anywhere you spray, something that's gonna kill those weeds is also going to kill your plot. Option two is the sucky sucky option. That's go out there and do a bunch of back breaking work and pull all of them by hand. This is always a losing battle though, as you're going to miss some. Before we even start, I want to shout this from the rooftops. This is not a chemical program. This is absolutely not going to take a place of your chemical program for whatever crop that you're wanting to plant as your food plot. But this is a super good way of getting rid of some of those weeds. Okay guys, the answer is a wick applicator bar. The way this works is we feed this poly rope into this three inch PVC that is filled with a chemical. We lower this to the desired location, the desired height. Let's say we've got clover growing and our clover is six inches tall. Our weeds are two feet. We might set this at one foot and we take this through the field. This poly rope is going to be soaked in that herbicide. And as it goes over around the field, it's gonna hit that weed and it's going to deposit that herbicide on that specific plant, killing that plant and not harming any of the vegetation that we want down below. So I've got a five foot stick of three foot PVC, which is what my ranger is. That's the width that I'm going to run. I've got seven of these tips that are gonna go in that I'm gonna drill a hole into this PVC. I need a seven H drill bit. So you glue this in on to the three inch PVC. You kind of see how that's rounded. Then there is rubber washer where that you feed that rope through. You feed this through as well. You tighten that up. That's like a compression fitting. It's going to tighten up and prevent that from leaking. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill my seven holes for my initial boom. But there's more to this, so keep watching. You don't wanna jump right into a seven eighths bit because the bit's gonna spin all over that PVC. So you just start with a really small bit just to get you a pilot hole. <laughs> Then you can drill your big bit. Okay, so I've got my seven holes drilled and the seven eighths bit is a little bit small. So instead of going and buying another $15, $20 bit, I'm just gonna take my file and I'm just gonna go around it a couple times real quick, won't take but a few seconds in each hole and just get that hole opened up just a little bit more where that fits. So I've got these seven all in. They're not glued yet. They're just sitting in there. Now I had to rotate the pipe a little bit and then I'm gonna drill six more. This is gonna make sense in a minute why these seven aren't gonna be good enough. Kinda wanna show you what I got. Um, hope you can see that. If we just go straight, we're gonna miss spots in our field. So we're gonna stagger these. In other words, this will stay. This one will go to here, thus overlapping this one. This one will go to here. I'm gonna go ahead and glue all these on tonight. I'll be ready to finish the project tomorrow. Just make sure that you hold them in there and get that good seal to where that C is kind of going over that pipe in the right direction. So we let all our fittings set up all night long. Now we need to go back and put our poly rope in. This is half inch poly rope, I believe. What I'm doing, I'm cutting every 18 inches. That leaves two or three inches of the, of the rope down inside the pipe. So make sure it's not cut off too short. And as you're cutting this, it kind of starts trying to fray on you. And you just take a, take a lighter and burn that kind of back down. 
And the reason that we're doing that is because one, you don't want your rope coming all to pieces, but the other thing is we gotta be able to get that compression fitting over top of that. And if you just tried that with that loose right there, it would just absolutely go everywhere. This poly rope has like a wick in the middle of it. That's what it kind of looks like after you get through cutting it. You need to use a razor blade to cut it. And then you can kind of see the little wick that's inside there. That's what's gonna be taking the chemical and moving it through. This is what it looks like when you get it done. You obviously have your two compression fittings and then your two caps that slide on, tighten those up, stick this in, down in, put the compression fitting in, tighten up. Take this in, same thing, put the compression fitting down in there, tighten up. Pro tip, coming towards you guys, don't use a screwdriver to push that in. Here's how you do it. Get one of these started and twist, just twist, and it will start. Don't end up like that. I have got it completely done other than gluing the end caps on and also putting the fill cap on the top side. So there's never a point to where it doesn't overlap. Here's an extra one I just put on there for fun. Not really. I accidentally screwed up and made a mistake there. Drilled one too many holes. So all I did was just put a, uh, another coupler in it and put a small piece of rope in it. So that should be fine. If you only did like the top row, you see how you would have a gap. Even if you put two side by side, you're gonna have a small spot in here where there's a gap. Where this way, you should not have any gap all the way through on your entire boom. Here's what I got for the fill slash vent. So it's the same thing as I had, and then I've got basically a water hose spigot that screws on. I can put that a little funnel in there, fill the three inch pipe up, and then I also can put it on here, keep it from sloshing. I can close up completely. And then when I get to the field and I need for it to breathe a little bit, I can crack that as air vent. I got her all set up. I'm not gonna zoom in on the welds, mainly because I'm not a welder and I'm certain some of you guys are, and I don't wanna get bullied on YouTube. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You can pick on my welds all you want to. This piece here is 44 inches long. These are eight inches long. They're just enough to go down uh, inside the standards. You can see there's also two on that side. Then I've got the strap tightened to hold them up. Then I come back here. This is one inch square tubing. It's what this right here is. This is inch and a quarter. So it fits inside there. And I drilled like six different places down through there to where I can raise this entire boom up or down depending on how high I want this to be. When I got ready to strap it on, I used zip ties to secure it in place. And then I put um, some old exhaust hangers, I think's what those are off my old Cummins that I used to have. So I was gonna build this on like this side where it hangs off five feet. The reason that I didn't end up doing that was a couple of reasons. One, I'm gonna be a 10 foot wide rig and I know I've got a lot of food plots that I'm not gonna be able to get into at that width. And I wanted to keep it small and versatile enough that I could get around in the plots, no matter how far back in the woods they are. Most trails will accommodate a ranger. So I feel pretty comfortable I can get this in anywhere. The reason that I didn't mount this on the front, it makes total sense to mount it on the front. The problem with the front is you're putting chemical on, say you're in a clover plot. You've got a big, nice, lush field of clover and you're treating, it's fairly thick out there. Everywhere that you're treating with your wick, your tires are running over, they're picking that chemical up and then they're driving on top of your clover. So I think there's a little bit of chemical damage that could be done that way. That's why I put it on the back. Yes, there's going to be places where my tires are gonna run over the target weed and go down. And that's just the reality of it. I think this is a good kind of a middle of the road because if we use it on the front, we're definitely gonna get a better kill on most all the weeds, but we're also gonna track that chemical across our plants that we don't want that chemical coming into contact with. I think this is kind of the best of both worlds. Anything that runs over with the Ranger, maybe it'll still get it.
the parts for the boom were $120, I think is what it was for a five footer. And then the metal was 80 bucks. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you found this video helpful. Smash that like and subscribe button if you hadn't already.